Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 28th of December, 2021, uh, the fourth day of Christmas and the Feast of the Holy Innocents. We are here at the Rectory of St. John's Church for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, with some bits of 1662. And uh, we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands. To set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises, declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. He is our Creator, our Savior, our Shepherd King, who's made, taken us to himself as his own people. Why would we not give open our ears and our hearts to his word and do so today? We are, as I say, keeping the Feast of the Holy Innocents, the traditional observance of the fourth day of Christmas, remembering the, the children of Bethlehem two years and under, uh, slaughtered on the orders of King Herod, um, who had caught word of the birth of the Messiah. 
uh, and uh, in murderous paranoid rage, well attested uh, by other uh, first century sources, um, acted uh, uh, to uh, 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 crush uh, this rival. Of course, uh, uh, warned in a dream, Joseph has fled to Egypt with uh, Mary and, and uh, her son. Uh, our Psalms today um, move around those themes. Psalm 15 um, uh, describes the character, the righteous and holy character, the innocent character of those who have indeed been admitted to communion and fellowship with God through faith. Lord, who shall dwell in thy tabernacle, or who shall rest upon thy holy hill? Even he that leadeth an uncorrupt life, and doeth the thing which is right, and speaketh the truth from his heart. He that hath used no deceit in his tongue, nor done evil to his neighbor, and hath not slandered his neighbor. He that saideth not by himself, but is lowly in his own eyes, and maketh much of them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth unto his neighbor, and disappointeth him not, though it were to his own hindrance. He that hath not taken his money upon usury, nor sworn, nor taken reward given against the innocent. Whoso doeth these things shall never fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, Psalm 16 uh, uh, speaks, uh, continues in this theme about the righteous and holy character of those who um, uh, have been, uh, uh, who, uh, adhere to God, and, uh, and, but this also speaks of the hope of resurrection, and not only for Christ, um, Peter quotes this on the day of Pentecost, it's a prophecy of Christ's resurrection, but also, of course, uh, for all those who have died in Christ, uh, uh, first and foremost, the holy innocents. Preserve me, O God, for thee have I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my God, I have no good like unto thee. All my delight is upon the saints that are in the earth, and upon such as excel in virtue. But they that run after another god shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, neither make mention of their names within my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou shalt maintain my lot. The lot is fallen unto me in a fair ground. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me warning. My reins also chasten me in the night season. I have set the Lord all way before me, for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also uh, shall rest in hope. For why? Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou shalt show me the path of life, in thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there is pleasure for evermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In Psalm 24, on page 368, also speaks of the moral integrity and sincerity, the innocence required of those who seek the Lord. The earth is the Lord's, and all that therein is, the compass of the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall rise up in his holy place? Even he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and that hath not lift up his mind unto vanity, nor sworn to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, of them that seek thy face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Even the Lord strong and mighty, even the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Even the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here begin at the 31st chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, Matthew, in his account of the Holy Innocents, uh, quotes from this chapter, um, uh, the verse, I think it's verse 16, about Rachel weeping for her children. Um, the, chapter, uh, the, the, the chapter from which this verse comes uh, is, uh, rather remarkably for Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, uh, is part of Jeremiah's um, book of consolation, uh, the, the, the three chapters, um, 30, 31, and so on, which um, uh, move from Jeremiah's characteristic focus on the judgment that's hanging over Judah uh, to the hope of redemption, the promises of salvation. And uh, it is perhaps the case that by making this allusion to uh, this passage in Jeremiah, that uh, Matthew is also expressing hope for the ultimate redemption of the holy innocents. At the same time, it saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Excuse me, here we are. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword, he's speaking about uh, the Israelites who escaped from Egypt, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Isn't that a marvelous phrase? Found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion, unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Uh, one ancient version translates, puts that as, The Lord hath saved his people, the remnant of Israel. That may preserve an older Hebrew. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coasts of the earth, and within the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. So uh, the return of the exiles. They shall come with weeping for repentance or joy, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden. Another wonderful phrase. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. Jesus, the Last Supper, your sorrows will be turned into joy. And I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. And now we come to the verse quoted by um, Matthew in his account of the Holy Innocents. It's actually verse 15 here of, of uh, Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. She's weeping for her children who have 
uh, been killed or gone into exile, uh, children of Israel, and uh, uh, foreshadowing the holy innocents. How does God respond? Verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears. For thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. For there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy... Ar Holy Church, throughout all the world, doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, the adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Um, uh, children uh, in the ancient world... Uh, uh, occupied the very had the very lowest status. Um, Jesus remarkably um, not only gives them highest attention, uh, suffer the little children to come unto me, uh, but also um, sets them up as models, templates of what it means to be a Christian. Uh, when he speaks here of the little ones that believe on me, he's speaking of Christians, especially those who are low status. Uh, despised by the world. Um, the holy innocents are indeed um, models for Christian discipleship, not only in the innocence of their lives, uh, but also here in their, um, uh, their humility, their low estate, um, and uh, the, the trusting um, dependence uh, on others to supply their needs, as we are to uh, trustingly depend on God. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who's got the highest position? Who's the most important? There it's a status contest. And Jesus called a little child unto him, someone of absolutely no social status, and set him in the midst of them and said, Except verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, or maybe simply except ye turn, and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, it's not pride that uh, wins the kingdom, but humility that receives it as a gift. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as the little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend, uh, cause to stumble in faith, cause to um, fall away from the Lord. One of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, um, stones of stumbling, uh, causes of stumbling and falling from faith. 
Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, causes you to stumble in faith, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save that which is lost. Hath think ye? Uh, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Here endeth the second lesson. So uh, this this feast, uh, which commemorates, of course, a, a cruel massacre, only two uh, typical of this world. We just heard of the massacres, uh, the military of Myanmar is, is uh, committing of uh, civilians, including children in, in Myanmar. Um, and uh, uh, what simply might be sort of man's inhumanity to man, uh, we see here uh, God's power to redeem and also uh, a template for a whole new um, scale of um, values, of moral values. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, that thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, for by the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. What we've heard with our ears, let us believe with our hearts, and confess with our lips as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and each other and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health on all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, uh, for its unity in the truth of the gospel, in brotherly love and charity, for its mission and ministry in all places. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries, in their peace, order, and good government, 
and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. As I mentioned, uh, the peoples of Myanmar, uh, the Christians of India, uh, suffering um, uh, persecution, uh, the peoples of North Korea, of China, of Hong Kong, of Shenzhen, Tibet, of Afghanistan and Iran, of um, Syria and Lebanon, of Belarus, peoples of Ukraine fearing a Russian invasion later this month, uh, for uh, the peoples of West Africa dealing with uh, jihadi raiders, killers, kidnappers, the peoples of Yemen and Ethiopia caught in brutal, bloody civil wars, uh, the people of uh, Venezuela, Cuba, uh, Nicaragua, fallen in the hands of criminal dictatorships, um, and for the people of Haiti, suffering the aftermath of governmental collapse, um, uh, unbridled crime, and uh, massive earthquake on top of atrocious poverty. Bid your prayers uh, for all those who, all clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, um, for their fruitfulness and good works, um, for the innocence of their lives, uh, through the forgiveness of sins and the sanctification of the Spirit, uh, for those who suffer in mind, body, or state, they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. I bid your prayers for those who grieve, thinking especially the family of an old friend of mine named Marie Turner in Nova Scotia. And also for the family of Drew Troxler here at St. John's. I bid your prayers for those who are suffering uh, uh, painful conditions such as shingles, uh, debilitating infirmity, cognitive impairment, or dealing with cancer and its treatments, or undergoing surgery or recovering from it, or hospitalized uh, for those who are um, hungry and homeless, orphaned, abandoned, abused, I think especially of children uh, caught up in um, migrations as refugees. Um, for uh, caregivers. Uh, for um, those who minister to the sick in mind and body. Uh, for those who um, combat um, the abuse of children and their trafficking. Uh, remember those who are newborn and their mothers. And uh, for those who are dying. Remember before God those who have departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him that we with them may rise to glory. And this day that being under the protection of the divine mercy, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, transformed into the likeness of his Son, made fit to receive him when he comes again in glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. 
For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Almighty God, who out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast ordained strength, and madest infants to glorify thee by their deaths, mortify and kill all vices in us, and so strengthen us by thy grace, that by the innocency of our lives and constancy of our faith even unto death, we may glorify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate, and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's hear again the consolation. Um, we read in chapter 31 of Jeremiah, consolation uh, to um, the mother who's lost her children. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears. For thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his most holy will.